Hi guys, Olive here. Here today to review I'm Glad My Mom Died by Jeanette McCurdy. This book was published in 2022 by Simon & Schuster. The hardcover comes in at 320 pages. However, I listened to the audiobook version that was narrated by the author herself. I received the audiobook for free for reviewing purposes through Libro FM. This is a memoir written by the former Nickelodeon star, who I am sure you know played Sam on the hit kids TV show iCarly for six seasons between 2007 and 2012. However, she does not appear on the revival that is currently going on because Jeanette McCurdy actually retired from acting in 2017 after an 18 year long career. And McCurdy was only in her mid 20s when she retired. So that math, in addition to the fact that she starred as a main character in a kids TV show for such a long time, might tell you that she got a very early start in the acting industry. But we find out in this memoir that the acting career, childhood stardom, these were never things that she wanted. It was actually her mother, who we obviously learn a lot about in this memoir, given its title. It was her mother who encouraged her to go into acting, or should we say pushed her into getting into acting. It seems like Jeanette's mother wanted to get into acting when she was younger, but she wasn't allowed by her parents. So she pushed her daughter into it to, I guess, kind of live vicariously through her. At the start of this memoir, Jeanette discusses her early years before she even became a child actor. And she talks about how her family had a lot of money problems, which the job she got acting obviously helped alleviate once those came along. But she also discusses how she grew up in the Mormon church, which she really enjoyed being a part of, especially on Sundays, because those three hours that she would spend at church were a reprieve from the chaos of her home. But mainly what Jeanette McCurdy chooses to highlight from those younger years, and really what she focuses on during the entirety of this memoir, is the complicated relationship with her mother. And let me be crystal clear here, despite any preconceived notions that anyone out there might get about how Jeanette feels about her mother, given the title of this memoir, Jeanette revered her mother growing up. She did everything she could trying to make her mother happy and trying to be the person she thought her mother wanted her to be. The problem was that, as you can clearly see as you read the book, Jeanette's mother obviously faced some mental health challenges, at least during Jeanette's upbringing, possibly beyond that. Outbursts, irrational behavior, demands, control issues, and some downright weird behavior that I would say defies categorization. It's clear looking from the outside, looking in from the outside as we can as readers, and as it seems Jeanette can now that she's had some distance from this situation, a lot about the environment in which Jeanette and her siblings grew up was not right, not healthy. But as a child, that was all Jeanette knew. And so she just lived through it. Her mother had gone through cancer in Jeanette McCurdy's very young years, and eventually that cancer came back. Her mother died in 2013. And suffice it to say that Jeanette was devastated. This woman who had been such a big presence in her life, a dominating presence, you could say, was now gone. So Jeanette McCurdy was dealing with all the issues from her upbringing, including an eating disorder that was beginning to take over her life. But then she was grieving the loss of her mother as well. I personally really admired that Jeanette didn't tone down any of her struggles in this book. She is extremely honest about her experiences during her childhood, a lot of which were bad, but there were good moments as well. She's comfortable acknowledging that while it was an abusive situation overall, it wasn't bad 100% of the time. She's very upfront about her ongoing struggle with her eating disorder and all the ups and downs of that. And she's also comfortable talking about some of the processing that she's had to do since the loss of her mother, looking back at her childhood and identifying what may have been unhealthy and really looking at who her mother actually was. At the very end of this memoir, Jeanette uses a word 
to define what she believes her mother was. It's not a word I'm going to repeat in this video because frankly, I think it's over usage here on the internet has drained it completely of its clinical meaning. But I do think Jeanette may be onto something with that. But it's at that moment at the end of the memoir as it's concluding that you really feel how much peace Jeanette has made with the conflicting emotions that she still has about her mother. She loves her mother, but she feels very angry about what her mother did to her. She misses her mom, but in a lot of ways, she's glad that her mother is gone because she's not being actively abused by her anymore. And that's where the title of this memoir really comes from. I know a lot is going to be made of this title. I think a lot already has been made of this title because of the shock factor of it. But I think it's meant to be a tongue in cheek acknowledgement of that duality of those conflicting emotions. It's obviously also meant to be a joke. And you can see that as you go through the memoir because her mother clearly meant so much to her as she was growing up. I also know that a lot is going to be made, is currently being made, of the so-called revelations, the big items within this memoir, things like specific types of abuses that Jeanette McCurdy suffered or her feelings about Nickelodeon or some of her former co-stars, basically anything that a media outlet can turn into a news item. I personally hate the way the media covers celebrity memoirs. They have people comb through these books looking for those hot, flashy things that they can turn into a headline, they can turn into a whole article or a listicle to get clicks on their website, as though this person didn't write a whole book as though they didn't have more to say than could be contained in one of those articles. I made a point of not discussing those piping hot tea, biggest revelations types of items in this video, because not only are they available everywhere if you just Google for them, but also that's not what the majority of this book is about. And I am here to discuss the book. This book is about Jeanette McCurdy's journey, going through this abuse, but coming out the other side to find her own voice and and most importantly, find healing. Even though this book could be difficult to read sometimes because the subject matter was so heavy, I enjoyed this book quite a bit. As I said before, I really admire her candor, but I also have to say I really appreciate how self-aware she is. There's a moment toward the end of the memoir where she refers to herself as an opinionated pushover. And that's because she has a mind of her own, she has opinions, and she's not afraid to share them. But she also acknowledges that she gives in to other people a little bit too easily. She's kind of agreeable to a fault because she got so used to just giving in to her mother's demands in order to keep the peace. And maybe that's something that she's brought forward into her adult life a little bit more than she'd like. She also comes across in this memoir as just being very level-headed very reasonable, very relatable, and very in touch with reality, which is not always something we can expect from people who have achieved any level of celebrity. But there's a moment in chapter 34 when she's discussing the pitfalls of child stardom. I actually think chapter 34 is my favorite chapter in the entire book because of how strong it is. She talks about how tiresome it becomes having people recognize you and want the same thing from you over and over again, pictures and autographs graphs and they say the same things to you every single time, especially for someone who never wanted this in the first place, that grows very old. And she also talks about how accepting certain roles makes people see you in one way for the rest of your life. She also talks about how difficult it is growing up in the limelight, how all these eyes are on you and you're expected to maintain a level of perfection when growing up is a very messy business. I love the way she puts basically everything in chapter 34. But even though chapter 34 is very remarkable in terms of both its content and the way that it's written, I think that is such a strong chapter. I would say, that the rest of the book, the writing is decent. It's serviceable. I wouldn't say it's anything necessarily to write home about, but it gets the job done. And that job is putting her memories down on the page. Obviously, that was the focus over the style in which it was done. And that's fine. But since I listened to the audiobook version of this memoir, I can also speak to its quality. As I said at the start of this video, it is narrated by Jeanette McCurdy herself, which I always think is nice when the author of a memoir reads their own memoir 
are. You get to hear their story directly from them, especially if they have a distinctive voice, a recognizable voice, if they're a celebrity, which I do think Jeanette McCurdy does. I do think she has a very nice speaking voice. But my feelings about her narration, her performance as a narrator, are about the same feelings that I have about the writing style of this memoir. And that's that the focus was a lot more on the content than it was on the style or in the case of the narration, the performance. I think she's just interested in telling her story rather than giving a performance. And I don't know if that's because she's done giving performances because she's done acting. I know she's still involved in the industry, just not acting anymore, or because this was all very difficult for her to talk about. And I totally understand if that's the case. I just figured I should mention that her narration comes across a little bit flat at times. And that also very well may be because she naturally has a very dry style of delivery. But I wanted to mention that just in case you're a fan of audiobooks and you're interested in reading this book and you're trying to decide between the audiobook or a physical copy or an e-copy, I think you're fine in any way you want to read this book. I think it's just based on your preference. It's not like one version is better than any of the others. But if you you are interested in reading this memoir, or if you've already read it and you want to share your thoughts, I would love to hear from you in the comment section below. If you want to get your hands on a copy of this book, I've put links in the description box below to a bunch of different places where you can find it. They're there for your clicking convenience. And at the bottom of that exact same description box, you'll see links to everywhere you can find me around the internet in case you would like to keep up with what I am reading and writing about right now. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you're having a wonderful day. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.